Hi guys and gals, Froggy here. Uh, I am back on the right rear because I was not able to get that uh, bracket, the caliper bracket off. And I need to get that off to change the uh, disc. Um, so now I'm back there, I'm going to shoot a separate video for this because I'm also probably going to have to use heat to get that nut off. Uh, the caliper bracket bolts um, go about 150 foot-pounds. They're on really, really tight, and they're big. And unless I can get a good angle on it, I'm probably going to have to use heat on it. So anyway, I'm just going to jack up this one corner, and I'm going to jack it up pretty high after I get the wheel off so that I can have some room to swing a breaker bar. Okay? Okay, so here's where the problem is going to be. You can see I've got my socket on there. I'm shining my light right on it. So there's my socket on the bottom bracket bolt. But it's it's on really tight, like over 150 plus it's rusted. So how do I get enough leverage on it to get it off? So there's a bunch of different ways. One way the trouble with the whole situation is that's going to be a six-point socket right there. That's a that's an impact-rated socket. It's a six-point socket, so I can't position it as many places as I can a 12-point socket. And the breaker bar only engages in four positions, 90 degrees apart, right? Because it's got a square on the end of it. So I can't get a lot of different angles to get the right angle so that the bar is, starts out down here and then I can swing it up and I can break the nut. Okay, so a couple of ways to get around that. One way is to use a torque wrench as a breaker bar, which is no-no. You, you don't want to do that unless you absolutely have to because you throw off the calibration of the torque wrench. And, but the head on the torque wrench is adjustable lots of different places, so I can get the right angle on the other end of it. So that's one way to do it. Uh, I already soaked it up with, I used some PB Blaster, it's right in the middle of your screen, and... Um, Lately, I came across somebody who said acetone and ATF, automatic transmission fluid, is a real good combination. So when I run out of this, I'm going to be make, mixing up some of that. 50-50, um, I think, is what they said. But you have to cover it up because the acetone evaporates really fast. So back to this. If that doesn't work, then I'm going to have to put heat. I've got a small... Um, torch that I'm going to use. I think it's propane so it doesn't get that hot. But I'm going to heat up that nut and try and get it off. Uh, I call it a nut or a bolt kind of interchangeably. Um, so give me a little bit of slack there. Okay. So let's try first with a real breaker bar. Then we're going to try with a torque wrench. And if those two don't work, I'm going to get out the heat. Well, I think I'm going to buy a lottery ticket because I got lucky. So I used the long breaker bar, which is the correct thing to you to do. And I was able to move it about 15 degrees. Then I switched to a shorter breaker bar because I couldn't get the long one back in after I moved it 15 degrees. But the shorter one, I can get in a little bit different angle um, and this is really hard to explain but if if you've done it before you know what I'm talking about if not then you just have to kind of get out the uh, oh look at that dragonfly yeah, I just got a dragonfly coming over to check out what I was doing <laughs> okay a couple other things that I thought of another one is to get the vehicle up higher now, if you see them in a garage with uh, 
you know, real garage lifts, they're up really high. And then you can swing your breaker bar any way you want to. You can get lots of different angles. But when you're on uh, jacks like this, I could try and get that up a little bit higher if I wanted to. but uh, And then I'd get a little bit more clearance here. Uh, but anyway... Long story short, I got the top, I got the bottom one going. I'm gonna try and get the top one going before I take it all the way off because I know this one's where I'm pointing is is loose now. Okay, let's try to the top one. Okay, two lottery tickets. So I got lucky again. So yeah, maybe I should be giving more credit to this uh, PB blaster. You know, there it is, right there. So, I used the short breaker bar. I was able to, uh, I tied the caliper out of the way because the caliper's on a short hose, so I needed to really get it out of the way so I could swing. I was able to get the knot right there, and the bar was up higher than it was, but it was up kind of in between a few things but I was able to swing it down I put gloves on because uh, I figured if, if something slipped I was gonna skin myself but anyway I uh, I broke it loose once you break it loose you can use almost use a ratchet or maybe take one more turn but just breaking it loose is the hard thing uh, I might be able to just use a, a regular ratchet like that to get it the rest of the way. Uh, one other thing, what was I thinking of? One other thing. I guess it's just that when you're breaking a, a hard nut or a bolt loose, you need to think about it more than one way. You need to do some problem solving and think about it a few different ways. Um, oh, I know what the other thing was. This fell off of my caliper. And that's just just a cover. It's like probably a steel cover that goes over the piston. You see right there? There's one has the cover and one doesn't have the cover. So it just fell off. It just it's just got some little clips to clip it back in. So no big deal. Okay, let's get this caliper. Uh, let's get this bracket off. Okay. Bracket comes off to high torque bolts. This is the one that got damaged. You can see it it got thin on one side. Actually, as I look at it, I probably could have got away with it. Um, but I'm sure it's below specification. In everyday driving, when your brakes don't get that hot, sorry, uh, before I was interrupted by the compressor, what I was going to say is, in everyday driving, that probably would have been okay for years, but if you're ever driving where you have a steep downhill and you're riding the brakes a lot, like, say, the, the um, Grapevine Pass or, or the, uh, is it Tahone? Um, somebody help me out if they know exactly the, it's like five and a half miles of downhill, uphill, and so you're riding the brakes a lot, and that's when, um, a thin rotor could get you jammed up. It could overheat, uh, because there's not enough metal mass there to dissipate the heat. So, uh, just to be safe, I've already got the caliper right over there in that white box so I'm gonna put it on like uh, parking brake looks okay it's been holding decently not terrific but decently so uh, the rotors are marked with a minimum thickness and just want to show you I've got a caliper here somewhere there it is So, I don't know if you can read it. It's 28.5. Maybe you could read this one a little bit better. 28.5 right there. 
Um, so let's measure the new one and the old one. Just trying to do everything one handed here. I've already zeroed out. So the new one's 30 and a hair. The old one's about 28, so it's under, but just barely under. So like I said, could have got away with it, but uh, what the heck, it makes a good video for you guys and gals. So let's put this new one on and uh, button it all back up. I'll go a little quicker. I'm going to clean up these threads with a wire brush. I don't think I'm going to put any Loctite on something that takes like 150 foot-pounds. Okay, so here's an important little froggy tip here. The new rotor is thicker than the old rotor. And the calip the pistons in the caliper have already come out that way. So this space here is too narrow for the new rotor to fit into. Okay? So you've got to compress or push those pistons back into the caliper. So this is what I, how I do it with a big C-clamp, an old brake pad, just so I can put equal pressure on both of those pistons and just squeeze the C-clamp from there to there. If you try to do one at a time, you just the other one just pops out. So you have to do both of them at the same time, okay? This is an important little froggy trick. Got it? Tighten up these caliper bolts. Remember there's a 16 millimeter flats. You have to hold that. Tighten that up to 30 foot pounds. Top and bottom, okay? Almost done. So, okay, that's it. Uh, not having to bleed this side, because uh, I already bled it when I put that new uh, caliper on there. So, we're done. Put some comments down there if you have any questions. Give me a thumbs up or a like if this helps you out. Subscribe to my channel if you want notifications. Ring the bell. Be safe. Have fun. Froggy out. Let's go, Brandon.